it's Gemma again, aka Gem Jar Soap, and I'm here for another exciting video with Bombay Stores Fabric. So today I'm going to be showing you how to make the Simplicity S9125 jumpsuit. So as you can see, this pattern has multiple options. You can make a maxi dress, a play suit, or a jumpsuit, and there's two different bodice options as well. So I'm actually going to be taking this bodice option here and I'm going to be combining that with the jumpsuit pattern. So Bombay Stores Fabric have very kindly provided me this gorgeous fabric for this project. So this is an abstract leaf print viscose. It's got these lovely botanical prints in sort of shades of peach and pink and green with this nice light blue background. It's got a really lovely drape and feel to it because it's a viscose and also I think it's going to be nice to sew with but also really nice for my friend to wear in the warmer months. The other thing you need for this project is bias tape. So you can either cut and make bias tape from your fabric or you can buy it in a matching colour. I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do yet. I'm going to see how much of this I've got left. You also need elastic for your elasticated waistband and matching thread as well, which I think always gives a nice professional look to home sewn garments. So gather up all your materials and we'll get started cutting out our pattern piece. So I've got the two always very long pants pieces. I've got a front bodice piece, a back bodice piece, and then I've got some long sort of rectangles for the necktie and the waist tie. And of course, because it's a homemade garment, you gotta add pockets. Any opportunity to add pockets, we'll always do it. I'm here on my floor because that's where I do all my fabric cutting because it's the biggest space that I have. Um, I just wanted to mention that when you're cutting out your pattern pieces, always pay attention to the double-ended arrows because they'll show you the way that the pattern piece should lie relative to the grain of the fabric. Also just worth mentioning, I always like to play a fair amount of Tetris when I'm positioning my pattern pieces to reduce waste. So I think that's always a good thing. And if you're looking for any projects, if you do have leftover fabric from previous projects, um, please check out the video I did on making a makeup bag. I made that with the scraps from the dress I made on this channel as well. Out all my pattern pieces and I've transferred my pattern markings. So on this pattern I've got notches which are the small triangles here and I've also got these circles which I've marked with tailor's tacks. If you have any questions about pattern markings um, I recommend checking out the video I made on making a shift dress on this channel because I talked through it all there. Let's start with the bodice front because that's the first instruction in the pattern. I've got these um, circles that I've marked here with tailor's tacks on both pieces of the front bodice and the really nice effect that this jumpsuit has is it has a nice keyhole here so you can see a bit of your decolletage which I think is always a very nice look. So um, the first thing I need to do is stitch these two pieces right sides together, starting from the bottom and then just stitching up to the base of the circle. Now I've sewn that front seam. Um, we can see the bodice is starting to come together. Um, loving this fabric. I'm always so jealous when I make things for other people because I always think, oh, what will for myself? But no, it will look so lovely on my friends. So I'm excited for her to see it. So the next step in the instructions is to press down these edges. So we're at my ironing board now. I've finished these edges off nicely and trimmed off the loose threads. Because this is viscose, it does tend to be a bit thready, a very technical term. So yeah, after I zigzagged it, I also trimmed it down. What I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna press the stitch seams flat. So now that I've done that, the next step is, as I said, to fold over these edges to get this edge finished. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stitch down this side. I'm gonna go for a square angle at the bottom here. So I'm gonna square it across, go across these two edges and then I'm going to stitch back up the other side. Okay, so I've sewn that edge down. You can see on the back here, if I show you this edge, that's my zigzag stitch that I use to finish and then that's my running stitch there. Um, and we're going to basically do the same thing for the back piece. So again, we've got this orange circle to note where we need to stitch up to. I'm going to put the two back pieces right side together and then I'm going to stitch along this seam here. 
and that leaves this edge not stitched because again we have a keyhole on the back. It does differ slightly because it's got a slight notch in the top so basically how I've dealt with that is I've pressed up to the notch and then instead of pressing it flat so you get wider here I've then sort of manipulated the fabric a bit so it comes around a curve. So I've now sewn my two back pieces together, my two front pieces together and I've finished off the edges of the keyholes for the front and the back pieces and I've pressed them now so you know it was a bit wavy before but now they're lying nice, nice and flat. So the next step is to do the side seams. So I've just pinned right sides together, my back piece and my front piece. I'm going to stitch that with a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance so we're back on my floor and that's because I'm going to be cutting out some more fabric to make my bias binding for the armholes. So for that I'm actually going to be using some um, instructions from the Francois Tilly and the Buttons pattern because I find these instructions really clear and easy to follow. I've got my fabric here. This is laying the same way as it was when I was cutting my original pattern pieces. But as I said, because we're cutting it on the bias, we need this piece of pattern paper to lie diagonally so that the grain line grain is going this way but we're cutting it on the bias this way and that will make sure that it stretches like this. And the first step in preparing the binding is to turn your one of your bottom edges up by 10 millimeters and press that okay, down. So now I'm going to pin the raw edge, so that unfolded edge of my bias binding with the raw armhole edge. So I'm going to put the raw edges and the right sides together and I'm just going to line up the top of the bias binding as well with the top of the bodice and I'm just going to pin that all the way around. Now I've pinned that all together so we can see that the bias binding is nicely lined up with the raw edge of the armhole there and I'm going to sew that on my machine using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. I've now sewn my bias binding around my armhole using that seam allowance so you can see I've got the stitched edge here and the folded edge here and now what I'm going to do is trim off that end and then I'm also going to trim the seam allowance using my pinking shears so these have a serrated edge so they finish it with a nice zigzag and then I'm just going to clip the curves so that means putting in little notches with little scissors like this little triangular notches and that helps the curve to lie flat. The next thing I'm going to do is to prepare my bias binding to be understitched so again that's an important step to help it to lie nice and flat so what I'm going to do is I've got my bias binding here my bodice here, I've got my seam here and this is my trim seam allowance and I'm going to press that seam allowance towards the bias binding. Okay so I've now done my understitching so on the back we can see, you can quite see but there's a line of stitching running along the edge of that raw edge here and from the front you can see that line of stitching along there and that just means that when we fold over the bias binding it just lies so much easier and you get that lovely neat edge. So the final step in doing our bias binding is we've got that fold that you pressed in earlier. Mine's disappearing a bit but I can still see it and basically I'm going to fold that over then fold the whole bit of the bias binding over so I've got that nice finished edge. I'm just going to pin that down and then in the instructions for the pattern it says to baste that in from the wrong side and then top stitch it from the right side. So I've now found both my armholes and if you're anything like me you'll be relieved that that step is over because I find it very very fiddly um, and not the easiest to do and I would say that you know if it doesn't come out perfect don't worry about it there's always pressing can help to sort of even out any bumps and it's another good reason to use matching thread because then if your stitching veers off a bit of course then um, you can't see it as well so yeah if it's gone a little bit wobbly don't worry doesn't need to be perfect but I'm glad that step's done. Now I am going to work on the necktie so the first step in that is <clears throat> that we're going to create the casing for the necktie 
by folding over the top of the front bodice pieces and the back bodice pieces. Now on your pattern piece at the top there are these fold lines which are indicated and that basically guides where you're going to fold the fabric down to. So I'm making a medium so I'm just going to measure that quickly and that's just over an inch down from the top. So I'm just going to make some guide markings on my fabric here in chalk. So I know that when I'm going to fold it down, I'm going to fold it down to that guideline and I'll probably press it. But obviously we've got this raw edge here as well that we want to get rid of. So the pattern tells us to fold that over by a quarter of an inch and then you fold on the fold, fold, on the fold line and then you've encapsulated the raw edge there got my uh, necktie casing sewn so they're all folded over and stitched together and we've hidden that raw edge and then they've got an opening on each end which we will use to put the necktie through. That is to actually thread it through the casing on the bodice so to do this you just want uh, you add a safety pin at one end um, I tend to try and use a bigger one because it's easier. So when I'm threading it through, I'm going to start on one of the front sides because it's going to tie at the front in a nice bow. So we want it to finish up at the front. And I'm just going to pull that, thread that through, putting that safety pin through first. You pull the safety pin through and then your necktie will come through with it. So I've threaded that all the way through through now so this is it from the front with the two loose ends then we've got the shoulders here and then in the back we've got the nice keyhole there that's everything now on the bodice until we attach it to the trousers so first thing I need to do is to pin the front pant to the back pant and stitch the inner leg seam so I find it quite difficult when I make trousers that the front and the back look quite similar when you cut them out. So what I've done is I've just put a pin through both of my back pieces so I remember which ones they are. And then all I'm going to do is pin right sides together, a front piece and a back piece, and I'm going to stitch all the way down the inner leg seam. So I've sewn my inside leg seam on both of my legs. The next step step is for me to do the crotch so that's this nice curve here so I like to lay it flat when I do mine because I find it just the easiest way to pin it I've also kept in the pins on my back legs so that I know which side to lay with which side because you want your back leg together and your front legs together now so I've got my other piece here and I'm just gonna put it right sides together I'm going to match up the seams here so I'm going to do that first match that up in the center and then I will just pin up here around here so I've now basted my crotch together so I've got all of my trousers attached to each other and I've still got the pin in there so I know which one's the front and which is the back so I'm going to before I stitch my crotch properly I want to get my model to try it on so to do that I need to sew up the outer leg seam as well and put in my so pocket. I'm making pockets in the same fabric and I press them as well which I like to do before I put them in I just find it makes them lie nice and flat when you sew them in so you've got Taylor's tacks here um, which show how the pocket should line up which you also have on your pockets so I match them and I match up all the raw edges and then and we then pin on our two other pocket pieces onto the back of the trousers. Again, right sides together and one on each side. Pin all of my pocket bags onto my front and back of my trousers. Um, my next step is, and I've trimmed my seam allowance here, my next step is just to press the pocket bag away from the trousers. So now we've got our pocket bags all pressed nice and flat away from the trousers. We're now going to attach the back and the front to each other. So all we do is lay them together 
and then you just want to line up your outer seam, your outer leg seam down here and also line up your pocket bags because you don't want to be going into your pockets and they mismatch. So to show you on this side, I've got this pinned now. When I stitch it, I'm going to first stitch the pocket bag together. So starting from here, just using a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, I'm going to stitch all the way down here, all the way around. And then what I'm going to do when I do my side seam, my outer leg side seam, I'm going to stitch down to this circle here, which I've marked with a tailor's tack. So I'm going to stitch down to there. I'm going to leave this open and then I'm going to start at this next tailor's tack here and then I'm going to go all the way along my leg to the bottom. I've sewn my outside leg seam, um, which I'm going to finish once my model's tried it on and we're happy with the fit. Um, I've also got my pocket bag sewn, which I'm going to finish again at the same time as I do these leg seams. Um, the next step is to just do a little clip in here, on just on this seam here, just below the pocket bag. So then the next thing I'm going to do after I've made that clip is I'm going to bring the pocket forward so that the raw edges of the waistband of the trousers line up with the raw edge of the pocket. So flip that completely forward and I'm just going to base that. We're now going to attach the bodice to the trousers. So I'm going to turn my trousers right then. I'm going to turn my bodice inside out. This is just the way I prefer to do it because they need to be right sides together. I'm just going to check that that looks like it's going to fit to make sure that's fine. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the trousers through the bodice. I've got that together now. So I've got the front of my bodice sitting against the front of my trousers, right sides together. I've got my front seams matching, my back seams matching and my side seams matching. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew that together. My bodice top attached to the trousers. So I've got a full jumpsuit here. I've got my model to try it on and we're happy that everything's the right sort of length. So the next step is going to be to put in the elastic waistband which will help to cinch it in. So the first step in putting in our elastic waistband is to turn the jumpsuit inside out again. Now I've got seam allowance for the bodice and seam allowance for the pants. So the next stage in the pattern is just to trim down the seam allowance for the bodice only. So here I am making sure that I press with my fingers the seam allowance for the pants away for the trousers and then I'm just going to trim the seam allowance on the bodice down to about a quarter inch. Pulled the bodice out from within the trousers where I had it when I was trimming my seam allowance just to make sure I cut the right bit. And the next step is then to press up the trouser seam allowance towards the bodice because this is going to form your elastic casing. I've also still got a raw edge here. So once I have pressed that all up, I'm then going to press under. The pattern recommends a quarter of an inch. Um, that I'm not sure I've got that all the way around, so I, I might have to do narrow in some places. But then I'm just going to press that under to hide that raw edge. So I've pinned that in place now. I think that was quite tricky for me in places because um, it felt like I didn't quite enough have enough seam allowance to sort of fold it over and then pin it in place securely. So I don't know if that was me when I was sewing, but I think maybe if I made this again, I'd actually increase the seam allowance further, bigger than uh, three quarters of an inch to make sure I properly had room to fold it over. Also to mention that you do need to leave a gap so that you can feed your elastic through. You'll stitch that closed once you've got your elastic in. I've just left myself a gap at a side seam um, so it's less noticeable when I stitch it up. Okay, so I've sewn in my elastic casing. Um, as you might be able to see, I wouldn't say it's the best bit of sewing I've ever done. I found that quite fiddly. Might go up there on the most fiddly part, actually more fiddly than the bias binding of this project. Next step then is to do our elastic. So in order to do that, um, I've got the waist elastic guide pattern piece. 
uh, which you can use as an initial guide for cutting out your elastic. And then I'm going to cut my elastic to that and then I'm going to take it through to my model and then I'll get her to see how snugly she wants it to fit. And I've got her measurement now and then I'm going to add like about two inches on either end as allowance. So I've got pins in there. Um, just before I put the elastic through the elastic casing, I'm just going to stitch at both of these pin points, just like some quick running stitches um, so that I know how long I want the thread to be. I've now got my stitching marking where my seam allowance is. I've turned my jumpsuit inside out. I've got my handy safety pin and I've also got a safety pin at the other end so that when I get close to this end I can attach it to the outside of the garment so it doesn't get pulled into the casing and I lose this end. So all I'm going to do is go in the gap in my casing and just start to thread that through. So putting the safety pin through first and then pulling the elastic through. I've got my elastic to the right length. I've just pinned it in place by overlapping my two long ends where my where I'd included extra elastic for my seam allowance and then to sew that I'm just going to do a square in that position where the two join. Once I've sewn in that rectangle I'm just going to trim off these edges. I'm going to pull that so it sits in the waistband and then I'm probably going to Mish I'm probably going to hand sew that gap shut just to make sure the elastic doesn't get caught. Cool. Next is to make the tie belt. So this is optional, but my lovely client would like it. So I'm going to make one for her. I also realized in making this, in looking at the instructions for this, I made a mistake when I was making my necktie. And that's why mine's a lot shorter because what I did was I just sewed these two pieces together and sewed all the way around here, around here around here and then turn that inside out. What I should have done, as for the belt, I'm going to stitch them together at the notched end here. Then I'm going to open this out, fold it along lengthways, right side together, and stitch that all together, leaving a gap to turn it inside out. And then as per the necktie, I'll turn it inside out and then just slip stitch that gap closed. And then the remaining step will just be to hem my trousers and my job suit will be done. So thank you everybody for watching this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. If you do follow it, please tag me at Jam Jar Sews on Instagram and at Bombay Stores Fabric so we can see your creation. Remember to get your fabric from the lovely Bombay Stores Fabric. This is available on their website in a number of colorways and they also have a huge range of other amazing fabrics. So definitely check them out. Thank you all for watching, bye.